new DVW Kids Books, International Collection, Pablo and Marco, written by M. David Van Ryan. Pablo and Marco woke up from a vivid night of dreaming. Buenos dias, yelled Magdalena. Wake up, niños, she commanded her two young sons. She flashed a bright flashlight in the room. It's too early, the young boys complained. No sleeping in today, she informed the boys. I have tamales that you must sell in the market. Maybe we can get some candy in town after we sell the tamales, Marco said to his brother Pablo. Marco was the youngest at seven years old. Pablo, his older brother, was ten. If mom lets us get candy, I want Apple Diablo Shemoy, said Pablo. It's too spicy for me, said Marco. Then Shemoyada, asked Pablo. Raspberry shaved ice for me, no Shemoy. Marco responded. Magdalena walked into the room and said, You can each have a shaved ice cone, but no more candy. What's for breakfast, Mommy? asked Marco. What do you think? asked Magdalena. I just spent all night making tamales. Making tamales was a lot of work for Magdalena, but she was known for them. She made the best. Most tamales are a bit dry, but hers are a bit saucy. The sauce is full of flavor. The tourists loved them, and it gave her some extra spending money. She was saving up for a new summer dress. She had a colonial kitchen with a case full of china just for show. There was an island table with a chopping block. There were bowls of fruit all around. Oranges, lemons, limes, and avocados. Can we have huevos rancheros instead, asked Marco. Sure, Magdalena replied. If you can lay a dozen eggs and cook it up, then we can have huevos rancheros. If not, then tamales it is. Oh, all right, said Marco as he walked into the bathroom to wash up and brush his teeth. Magnifico, came a voice from the kitchen. Best tamales I've ever tasted, said their father Diego. Save me some, Pablo shouted from the bathroom. You had better hurry, warned Diego. There are only 117 left. Marco laughed so hard that toothpaste came out of his nose. Which tamales did you prefer? asked Magdalena. They were all good, replied Diego. I packed one of each in my lunch for later. Gracias, he said as he kissed Magdalena and headed out the door to his truck. See you tonight in my new dress, Magdalena shouted back. Room went the truck as he sped off to work. Pablo came into the kitchen. Where's Papi? he asked. He left for work, replied Magdalena. But I was going to ask him something, said Pablo. You'll have to wait until tonight then, replied Magdalena. I'm sure he'll be in a good mood after you sell all my tamales. May I give Chiquita an orange, asked Marco. She's starting to gnaw on my finger. Sure, said Magdalena. Anything for the family dodo, she replied. Sometimes Chiquita surprised her with how smart she was, but usually she just got into trouble. Magdalena poured red sauce called salsa roja over the beef and pork tamales and white sauce called salsa blanca over the shrimp tamales. Here you go, said Magdalena with a smile. Eat up so you can tell all the tourists honestly how wonderful my tamales are. More salsa blanca, mommy, demanded Marco. Oh, no, you didn't, Magdalena scolded Marco. What do we say, she asked. Por favor, mommy, asked Marco. Now that's more like it, Magdalena replied. Of course, she said as she poured some more salsa blanco over her shrimp tamales. I feel sorry for the tourists, mommy, said Pablo after he had finished his food. Why is that, Magdalena asked from the pantry. They don't get to pour your wonderful salsa over the top like we do, replied Pablo. Well, bless your heart, said Magdalena, as she came out and gave him a hug. But then you two would be a hot mess with salsa all over the place. Now I made 120 tamales and we ate a dozen for breakfast, explained Magdalena. That is 120 minus 12 equals 108. Your poppy took three for lunch. He continued 108 minus three equals 105. 
I put two dozen in the freezer, explained Magdalena. That is 105 minus 24 equals 81. You can have three each for lunch, she continued. 81 minus 6 equals 75. Sell them for $2 each, she ordered. 75 times 2 equals $150. $100 for my dress, she continued. $150 minus $100 equals $50. $50 divided by two boys equals $25 each, she exclaimed. What will you do with so much money, she asked. Maybe we could get another bike, asked Marco. Or a motorcycle, asked Pablo. Well, you better get to stepping while it is still daylight, she said as she handed Marco the bag full of tamales. Go make me proud, she yelled after them. Marco followed Pablo through the alleys. There were yellow, white, and sandstone houses. Ferns and palm trees grew in abundance. They continued walking through their village towards the jungle, which is on the way to the beach. It was beautiful outside. The white houses gleamed in the sun. The palm trees swayed with the light breeze. They could see iguanas in the trees. Mommy could make pozole out of that one, said Marco as he pointed to a big fat iguana in the tree. See, si, said Pablo, chicken of the trees. Maybe we can get one on the way home. They spotted a black cat hunting a green parrot. The gato is going after the parrot, said Marco. Don't worry, said Pablo. The parrot can fly away. Can burros fly, asked Marco. Of course not, Marco, replied Pablo. Then that burrow is in big trouble, said Marco. He pointed to a burrow in the water getting a drink. A black anaconda was entering the water. Anaconda, shouted Pablo. We must save the burrow. The burrow didn't see it coming. Pablo took off his backpack and set it down pulled out his knife and jumped into the water. He wrestled the snake away from the burrow. Marco jumped into the water with his blade and started stabbing the large snake. After stabbing it many times and cutting off its head, the snake died and they carried it up onto the dirt road. The burrow figured out that Pablo and Marco saved its life and started following them everywhere. Marco gave the burro a sugar cane stick to chew on. Pablo had a brilliant idea. Marco, said Pablo, we'll have the burro carry the backpack. The burro didn't like the idea at first, but then gave in. They continued down the road into the next village. It was on the way to the beach. A friend of theirs from school lived there. Her name was Margarita. She was outside in a blue dress with flowers in her hair. Her mom came out to protect her in a wide-brimmed hat and a yellow dress. You boys look a mess, said her mom. What trouble have you found this time, she asked. Just a fight with an anaconda, replied Marco. It was trying to kill this burro, Pablo explained. Sometimes I wonder if you two will ever tell the truth, Juanita replied and stormed off. Did you really fight an anaconda? asked Margarita. See, si, said Pablo, and we killed him with our knives and left him on the road back there, Marco exclaimed. You two are very brave, Margarita concluded. Are you coming to my quinceanera party tonight? she asked. So that's why Mom needed the new dress, concluded Marco. See, si, said Pablo, we look forward to it. Gotta run, adios. The two boys headed back into the jungle and made their way towards the beach. Sometimes I get the feeling I'm being watched, said Marco. 
Well, considering there are millions of creatures that would like to eat you in here, that does not surprise me, said Pablo. They came into a clearing and looked up at a very large structure with steps going up. Do you think aliens made this, asked Marco. Nah, said Pablo, it must have been huge giants. The steps seemed to ascend into the heavens. They continued walking through the jungle. Papi says there's no such thing as aliens, explained Pablo as they walked under a large metal structure. He says they were invented in Hollywood by people with weird imaginations, he continued. Marco and Pablo walked through a gateway and suddenly disappeared. It doesn't look like a giant, said Marco. The two boys found themselves in outer space on board an alien vessel staring into the eyes of a gray alien with yellowish green eyes. Marco poked the alien and pulled out his eye. I can't see, said the alien. Run, shouted Pablo. The two ran down a tunnel as fast as they could. They each grabbed a jetpack and jumped off the alien vessel. Ah, they screamed as they plummeted toward the earth. They turned on the jet engines and safely landed on Earth, only to find they were still being chased. They ran like the wind to get away from the aliens. Down here, said Pablo, as he headed down a narrow canyon. It led them down to a waterfall. They jumped off a cliff and landed in the ocean. The aliens could no longer see where they went. As they swam up onto the beach, they saw their bag of tamales. Look, Pablo, said Marco, our bag. And our burro, said Pablo. We are back in business, the two shouted as they high-fived each other. They walked along the shore to the cabanas along the beach. Fresh tamales, only two dollars each, the boys shouted as they walked along the beach. Dos por favor, shouted a tourist. Cuatro, shouted another tourist. The boys made their way to the wharf by town. There were restaurants called taquerias selling tacos all along the wharf. The smell of barbecued shrimp, beef, pork, and chicken was in the air. The boys went down to their Uncle Juan's taqueria. They agreed to give him six of Magdalena's tamales for lunch in trade for huevos rancheros for Marco and chicken and rice for Pablo. Their uncle let them hang out and sell their last two dozen tamales to people walking by his taqueria. They finished selling all their tamales and headed back down the boardwalk. They stopped for their raspberry shaved ice and then turned around to go home. They said goodbye to their uncle and some of their family friends on the wharf. They waved to the Padres and the lawnmowers on the way home at both downtown churches. It was a beautiful city. It was especially beautiful at sunrise. The vividly colored buildings gleamed in the sun. Lively music filled the streets. They knew they were running late, so they hurried home. They each took turns riding the burro. When they got home, their mom scolded them for being late and told them to wash up for the party. Their dad promised them a spanking for lying when they told him about the anaconda and the aliens. And then he saw the anaconda by the side of the road. Forget about the spanking, boys, he said. I am so proud of you. Have a great time. We had better wait to tell him about the burrow, Pablo said to Marco after they got out of the car. See, si, said Marco. Sure are a lot of pretty girls, said Marco. They always dress up for a quinceanera party, Pablo explained. Everyone was dancing and having a wonderful time.
The next day, Pablo said to Marco, with the money we will make on the Anaconda cowboy boots, we can get a motorcycle and a new bike.